Both guys have been in phenomenal form the whole way through so far. So this should be a classic match. I was told briefly before coming into the commentary box that in Andy's match with Liam Roberts, there was something like 18 dishes between both players out of, I think, 23, 24 frames, something like that. Um, a phenomenal standard. Phenomenal standard. So I think it was 11 for Andy and 7 for Liam. Well, it's definitely a phenomenal standard of pull. And another, another fact here, guys, is both players are in the quarterfinals for the first time. So both of them, for the first time, have an opportunity to not only go further than the quarterfinals, but a chance to get into the semi-finals. Both of them managed to get to the quarters for the first time. They're on the TV table. They're on the main table. And both are in fantastic form. And what an opportunity for both of these guys. Make a bit of history for themselves. A chance for a place in the semi-finals of the World Championships, guys. The IPA World Championships 2024. The opportunities don't come bigger than this. I think we're in for a fantastic match, two guys in fantastic form. As I say, guys, this is the IPA World Championships 2024. That really doesn't get any bigger than this, so... Andy will break off first in set number one. Let's see how his break off is. And it looks like a dry one here. And it is dry. Amir will come to the table with an opportunity to try and make some headway in frame number one. As you can see, the yellow closest to the white ball. It's probably the only opening shot available, and he wastes no time. I think he's okay. I think he's on the one to the, the right middle pocket. And the three yellows down at the bottom right hand corner, they're definitely not easy. There's an opportunity here, most definitely. It's just a case of, I think it's one of these situations where you would rather not have the three balls at the bottom end of the table as your last three balls, but I don't see any other way for Amir here. He's going to have to stop the white on the red at the top of the table. If he goes that way, I think he's going to have to play the plant now. If he's on it, it looks to me as if he is just about. I don't think he is then if he's changing his mind. I've seen him having a look. It must be really, really tight. Yeah, he's using his extension. It must be so tight. He's got to just catch it on the inside first. And he's in danger of possibly covering the other yellow at the same time, so it's not an easy shot. And this is a tough, tough shot, guys, to get on any of these three yellows down the bottom. And he's going to be snookered here. Yeah, it's going to be a total snooker. And I think... In a lot of circumstances, a hit might be good here. It is a full ball snooker. And maybe a hit is good enough. If he can somehow just land below. It's okay. I would imagine that Andy might try and take the white ball back in a similar route. Towards the top left hand, uh, the top right hand corner. Sorry, 
He just has to avoid a bit of traffic. Which he didn't, but it's okay. It's absolutely fine. But again, Amir has got the exact same shot again. Oh, is he through the gap? Does he have a gap here? If he does, if he does have a gap, you can see there, guys, on your screen, he's got an opportunity here. This could be a phenomenal shot. Is it going to go? Is it going to go? It is. That's a great shot from Amir Riyad. It is a fantastic shot. And he's really un unlucky. He's, he's unfortunate the way the ball's landed. He had to avoid the traffic in the middle of the table. Unfortunately for Andy, he caught the first red. It looked like he might have been okay. But Amir has played a fantastic shot in this opening frame. And due to that fantastic shot, he is now on the black ball to go one frame in front and set number one. A great finish there from Amir Riyad. And he goes one frame up in set number one. Take you back, guys, to table number one. <coughs> Feel like every time we come to this table, Chris is at the table and Simon is in his seat. Chris has a chance on the yellows here. As you can see, this is the deciding frame in set number three. Frame number two, Amir had to break. Keep your eyes peeled for the scores in that match, guys. That is an absolute epic match. As we come back to the main table, Amir Riyad will break in frame number two. That's a decent break off, but it's looking dry. Made a good contact on the balls. And he's already out of his seat. And a chance here for Andy Crosdale. It was a decent break. The yellow looked like it was tracking towards the left middle. That was kicked away by one of the travelling reds. A three ball plant from Andy to start off here. And he's played it very well. Sorry guys, just had a, a brief break for one second there. Let's back to Andy Crosdale on this finish on the yellows. I think he's just about on the gap right now. And we, I spoke about it earlier, looking the gift horse in the mouth. You're better taking it while you're on it. And he just needs to give himself a shot. That's all he could do in that situation. I don't know if he could have maybe screwed through towards the opposite bottom bag, however. 
He's given himself a shot. And so often in pool, we are guilty of not doing that by trying to be too perfect. And there you go, Andy gets the reward by giving himself a shot. And he's now on the black ball to level up set number one. And he does indeed great finish, Andy. And Amir Riyad won, Andy Crosdale won in set number one. As I say, guys, that is set to be a classic match. As we go back to the outer table, Chris Boron has missed his chance on yellows and given Simon Ward a chance to win f set number three in a deciding frame. Simon would have been sitting in his seat, hoping for nothing more than an opportunity. An opportunity to get to the table. Chris has obviously given him that opportunity. Now the black looks like it'll still pass. I think he's okay. I think he's okay, but you just have to make sure that he gets straight enough on it. You don't want to be cutting across that. A massive finish ahead for Simon Ward. And a deciding, a, a set defining frame. And we'll stick with that guys right now. As you can see the main table at the bottom of the screen. But we will stick with the Simon Ward finish right now. And he is this black away from going two sets to one in front. And an absolute epic encounter from these two players. And he does indeed go two sets to one in front. And we'll come back to the main table with Andy Crosdale. Looking like he has a great chance on yellows. And he's not messing about. Uh, that's not sat exactly how he would have liked. I think he can still play it, but the yellow's going to be travelling. Can he play it in such a way where he's on the yellow to the middle if he plays it in thin enough? Might just bounce out, just nice and easy, living it into the opposite top corner. And it looked a touch thinner than I thought it was, so... I mean, I did actually think it was a touch thinner, so... Andy's played it very well indeed. This is a key shot here, has to control the white ball. Yellow is very, very close to the, the left-hand cushion. So he has to make sure there's no D-cell on it. And he's queued through the ball beautifully well there. And as you can see, guys, that yellow has not got a full pocket. So he's going to be playing this in off the outside jaw. But he seems comfortable with it. He's not messing about. Yeah, no problems for Andy Crosdale as he goes in search of the lead in this opening set. And he delivers with a lovely run out there. Amir could do nothing but sit in his seat. You can see the break off shot, guys. Again, and the ball splits super well. The yellow tracking towards the top corner. Fortunately, it got kicked away, and as you can see, for Andy Crosdale, he was left a great chance. And there's one of the other ties. Mark Farnsworth, Jake Dillon, New Love. Jake is one of the guys you hear quite often, people talking about. They say he's never an amateur player. But right now he is. An amateur player in the quarter-final match. Okay, guys, the latest on the, the screen right now was showing it was nothing each, but Jake has actually won nothing up in the opening set. Well, we'll keep you updated on that as we come back to the main table. The break-off looks dry again here.
But is this another good chance for Andy Crosdale? Again, it's a decent break. The balls are travelling. Just nothing really troubling a pocket. The thin cut in the red. Oh, he's unfortunate. It's knocked the red onto the side cushion. Going up the table. Don't know if he's gone far enough there. If he can hold. Yeah, he's going to play the one into the middle first. He's not gone far enough for the one at the top to be able to hold. And he's not played that too well, but has he just about sneaked past the yellow? If he has, he'll be able to play just a trace of side. A run towards the side cushion, the right hand cushion as we're looking right now, and he'll be on the red down the rail. It's exactly what he's played. Andy is in fine form, as I say, guys. He had a monster amount of runouts in the last match against Liam Roberts, and unfortunately for Liam, who had a number of runouts himself, Andy just outdone him on that and. I must say, guys, right now, he does not look like missing. Let's hope there's no commentator's curse. He just needs to be able to hold the white ball here, which isn't going to be easy because he can't get the cue under it. So he's had to drop back way, and he's gone cushion first, and he's not managed it. That was tough. That was tough. Andy would have loved to have been able to get his cue underneath the white ball just to drag it home. A bit more control on it. Always when you're playing the top of the white, there's always a chance it can move. I think it's exactly what's happened there. But Amir Riyad has now got an opportunity that he probably wasn't expecting. And he's not controlled that shot very well. And I don't even think, guys, that he can play a delicate little snooker here. So I think he's maybe only got the cut back into the middle. Or to drop the yellow in the bottom. He's going to play the one in the middle. Oh, yeah, I think he was hoping to move that red at the same time. Again, guys, this is a man in fantastic form. And I wouldn't be surprised if he manages to manipulate something here. Make something happen. As I say, guys, every time I have a look at the, the online chat, which is absolutely phenomenal, everybody keeping involved, and Amir seems to have a massive fan club on there, a massive fan club, and he's got 71% of the vote when it comes to this match. Oh, he's definitely one of the popular players right now from the viewers at home. Oh, the online vote has Amir fan club written all over it. And as I tell you guys, he is in fine form. He has won some fantastic matches on his way to this quarter final. And it's his first time at this stage. The same as Andy. Both of these players with a massive opportunity and a great chance to get into the semi-final of the World Championship 2024. And what can Andy do here? Is he just going to bounce it out and not the yellow bird yet? It was a clever shot that Amir played, I think. I think he was maybe wanted to get the yellow a touch closer to the red. But he's going to have to make something happen now. He's just tried to make things awkward there. Not leave Andy on the one hanging over the pocket. But unfortunately for Amir. Oh, 
was the light travelling? It is. Oh, he's going to be snookered. It wasn't an easy shot, guys. You hear people speaking quite a lot about the way the tables play. And you get that. When you play the ball in certain ways, you can get a bit of a skid, a bit of a slide. Unfortunately, when you catch that knuckle, as soon as it hit the second cushion, it was always going to be sliding high. And unfortunately for Andy, it's a big mistake. He's overhit it. He's trying to make sure he doesn't end up being caught low beyond the black. So he's just put a little bit more on it. Unfortunately, he hasn't managed to do it and execute it properly. And he's given Amir a fantastic chance here on these yellows. I think you've stuck with the bottom bag, yes. Just drop it in. He's going to leave the one over the middle pocket to last. There was no right or wrong way there. I think if the yellow was a touch higher over the middle, it might have been a lot easier. It just has to get low enough. They should have no problems getting a shot on this black ball. That's, that's not exactly ideal. But again, guys, I think the black is in such a position. He won't have many... Many places on the table where he won't have a, sh a, a decent shot, a decent chance. He's played that well. He's played it well. It could have been a bit more awkward. A little trace aside. He's given him the chance. Knocks in the black. And he levels up set number one. Two frames a piece and Andy will be kicking himself there he'll be kicking himself but Amir took them out well as you can see guys on the outer tables Mark Farnsworth on a finish against Jake Dylan Nulov and Simon Ward is on a finish against Chris Boron And a score update for you as well, guys. Jake Dylan Newlove is two frames to the good against Mark Farnsworth in that match. So it's a huge frame for Mark. He's got a chance on these yellows. I don't foresee too many problems. As we come back to the main table, Andy Crowsdale to break off. Such a huge shot in the game of pool these days. And what can Andy do here? Oh, it looked as if it was going to be dry, but the white ball is gone. The white ball has gone. Well, one free shot, one visit. Time running. For a moment it looked like it was going to be dry. The yellow at the top was kicked in off, off three balls. I think it hit red, red, white. Ended up in the top bag and then the white goes side cushion and straight across into the middle left pocket. That is unfortunate. It looked like Andy Crowsdale was going to get a bit of fortune. But it was quickly followed by serious <laughs> misfortune. And Amir Riyad has an opportunity here. And a chance to maybe... Go three frames to two in front and set number one. I don't think that's the best shot I mean I could have played there. I think maybe dropping that in, giving himself a choice of these both yellows, but he is okay. He just has to concentrate and cue this home. And he's used the full pocket, but he's got it. He made it a little bit more difficult than it had to be, but he's okay now. Yellow at the 
bottom. He just has to get up. Is he came too high? You know, it doesn't look to me like he's on the yellow into the bottom left hand corner. If he is, it's very, very tight, guys. I think that's a couple of shots in a row. He's slightly over hit. He's going to play the thin cut down the cushion. Loads and loads aside. It's a great view you have there on camera. Yeah, he's missed it. He's missed it. And he's given Andy a fantastic opportunity here. So Andy Crosdale getting back to the table. And it looked like Amir Riyad was going to take out those yellows. But as I say, guys, it was just a slight over hit. I don't know if Andy got a bad contact there or what. He was definitely trying to screw the white out. And it looked to me as if there was a bit of a bad contact. He's ended up with the white just dying on him. A nice simple containing shot from Andy Crosdale. And from Amir Riyad's mistake. And that's all you can call it, guys. It was a basic error couple of overhit shots and all of a sudden you're chasing that white ball. It should be a straightforward hit. He's potted it, he's potted it. Oh, he's got it in, you know. And he's got a plant, a straightforward plant to go three frames to two in front in this and what? Whoa, whoa. Guys, this is the drama that you get in the in the world of pool, especially here at the IPA World Championships. And Andy Crosdale played what looked like a fantastic containing shot. It looked like a straightforward hit. But Amir Riyad has managed to nail the pot in the opposite middle pocket and go three frames to two in front. Here's a shot for you again, guys. He could not have caught that any better. Absolutely caught it sweet. A Filipino kick back into the opposite middle pocket. Leaving himself a simple plant. And a chance to take out a finish. Fantastic stuff. As we go back and look at the outer tables, guys. Jake Dillon, New Love, setting up to break in that match against Mark Farnsworth. Simon Ward again at the table. Frame number six, Amiri had to break, leading three frames to two. Time running. I'll keep you updated on those matches as the scores come in, guys. As we'll go back to the main table. And that's a monster break from Amir. Huge, huge break from Amir Riyad. And he has a great chance on Reds here to take the first set. Again, guys, he's slightly overcooked that. I don't think the red passes the yellow into the bottom pocket, so he's going to have work to do. A break off shot again. It was a fantastic break. He caught them so sweet. Score updates coming in, guys. And Jake Dunn New Love is 3 1 up against Mark Farnsworth in that match. Keep your eyes peeled and keep your ears close as the results come in, guys. We'll keep you updated all the way. And back on the main table, Amir is in fine form and he is at the table with a chance, a phenomenal chance, to win set number one. Okay, 
He's okay. I think he could have just dropped that in and got himself roughly to the same position he's in right now. He's only a couple of good positional shots away. He's played that super well. Doesn't want to be too straight. Is he too straight? Is this going to be awkward? Is he going to have to maybe screw down towards the yellow on the side cushion? That might be a risk not worth taking. He might just need to leave himself a shot on this black. It doesn't look easy from where he is to get too close to the black. So this is a big shot. Taking his time is definitely the way to do it here. What will Amir decide here? He did decide to come down towards the yellow. It's a brilliant shot. Oh, he snookered. I think it's touching the yellow. It was a brave, brave shot, guys, but he's not on that. I think he's snookered here. Yeah, he is. You can hear it from the referee. He is. It's so unfortunate. It was a brave shot. As I said, it was the first shot that I thought of. How often do we try and get ourselves too perfect, guys, when maybe we should just give ourselves a shot? What can he do here? And unfortunately for Amir Riyad, he has given Andy Crowsdale a chance to get himself back in this set. He's going to get the white cleaned. I don't think he was too happy with that contact there. But look at this. Oh, it takes a turn in. It takes a slight turn in, maybe over a finger mark. But it was looking absolutely perfect, guys, until the last second. You're playing on such fine cloth. These tables are playing absolutely fantastic, guys. They really are. I've played on numerous tables all week. They are playing so good just so fine that the slightest thing can deviate the white ball and unfortunately for Amir there the white ball has landed on the yellow and it's given Andy Crowsdale a fantastic opportunity to get himself level in this set a massive shot Massive shot from Andy, has to put it in with a bit of pace. And he's missed it. He's missed it and it was always going to come down to the pace of that shot. It was never going to be easy. He had to get his white ball out. At the same time, he's making sure he potted the yellow and unfortunately he hasn't. And this is a great opportunity for Amir. Big pause. He's overcut it. And he's almost lost the white. But again, guys, this is high drama in one hell of a frame here. Andy having to pump this yellow in and get out. And he's not done it. Guys, this is incredible stuff. I think one of the shots Sandy played earlier when he snookered himself, the white came flying off the knuckle and came far too high and I think that's possibly been on his head there and he's just not hit that at all. A double into the... Has he trebled it? Has he trebled it? Oh, he has! And he has indeed, Andy Crowsdale! And it is three frames all in set number one. You can't take your eyes off this for a minute. Unbelievable stuff there. You see some of the shots that we've already had in this match so far. This match will have a highlight reel of its own. If it continues this way, That shot again from Amir, the Filipino kick, and then this screw. He was so brave taking this shot on, but as you can see, as the white comes down, he's thinking it's perfect. 
and then it just seems to drop onto the yellow at the last second. So unfortunate. Again, Andy with a fantastic chance. And some of the shots that were in that frame there, guys, and the frame before. Unbelievable stuff. You can't take your eyes off for a minute. So this is a deciding frame in set number one. He's got a ball. White is travelling. Again, that white ball of Andy's going close to the top left-hand corner. And look at that treble again, guys. Absolutely unbelievable. He was up off it super quick. There is no doubt in my mind that's what he played. Yeah, fantastic shot. And he's now at the table. On these reds. With an unbelievable opportunity. To take this deciding frame. And go one set in front. In this quarter final match. Of the IPA World Championships 2024. Slight over hit there, but he's always going to be okay. The yellow will keep the white in place. There's not really any danger here. So just one really good shot here. Just wants to give himself the right angle. Anything but straight. It's a whole lot thinner than Andy would have liked. He should be okay to hold the white here. So he's decided to go back and forth twice. And Andy Crosdale takes down set number one. Some high drama in that opening set, guys. Unbelievable stuff. Some big mistakes and some outstanding shots from both players. Back on the outside tables, Chris and Simon serving up a classic, and Mark and Jake Dillon, their love, as you can see, I'm not sure if that 3-2 in the match with Jake Dillon, their love and Mark Farnsworth. Simon Ward on the screen, it's saying one each, but it is 2-1 in sets to Simon Ward, according to my Q score here, so... Now we're back to the main table, guys. And again, another fantastic break. A break-off shot so important these days, guys. Amir has given himself an opportunity to try and get himself in front in set number one. Uh, set number two, sorry. Set number one, which was won by Andy Crosdale. Just a tiny flick on the two reds, just to make them a touch easier. He's landed a tiny bit awkward here, though. He should be okay. Yeah, he's opened the two in the middle of the table enough by the looks of it. Is he going to go to the one top side of it here? Oh, he's played the top ball first, running into the lowest one of the two reds in the middle of the table. It's a very good shot from Amir. He's still got a lot of work to do here. The red at the bottom of the table is going to be the one problem ball, I think. Unless he gives himself the angle, yep, to try and come down right now. I think he's done exactly that. It's nice and thin. So he's got a chance to get himself all the way down the table right now.
sorry guys if there was some interference on my microphone there. Hopefully it's a bit better now. As Amir has managed to get down. And is he landing on the yellow again? I think he has. He has indeed. And again, another slack shot from Amir. I mean, the one earlier was really unfortunate. But the one thing he has to do there is make sure he gets out. Make sure he gets out, giving himself every chance of taking out this finish. And unfortunately, has he got the angle here to maybe go and drop this in? Brilliant shot from Amir. Amir Riyad. As I said, guys, so far in this match, we might have our own highlight reel. Unbelievable stuff. Massive shot. And he's pumped at home. Nice and confident. We're going to welcome Mark back, guys. It's great to have you back, Mark. Yeah, thanks so much for holding the fort here, Stephen. I know you're with me now till the very end of this match. And uh, I can just tell with all the excitement in your voice, this has <laughs> been some match. And yeah. uh, Amir is playing his part in being involved in one great match. Yeah, it's, it's had so much drama. It's had crazy misses. It's had some unbelievable shots out of snookers and um, trebles from Andy. Filipino flick shots from Amir. Filipino been, uh, flick shots, did you say? It's been unbelievable. Wow. It has been unbelievable. Some terminology coming out of uh, <laughs> Walker the Talker's mouth here. Our own very Alec McCoyst. Yeah, I seem to get that quite a lot when I'm on That's the all I keep reading on the chat, <laughs> <laughs> I tell you now. But yeah, I'll be back now, here, yeah. and uh, Simon Ward 2-1 up, and 2-1 yep. uh, down in that uh, set, is he, I think? Oh, that one is 0-0, nil -nil just started, so 3-3 but three -three in the first set, what a great... Uh, yep. Jake was 3-1 up in that. Oh, was he? So uh, it's now 3 all. so Mark has fought back in that one. We'll keep you right up to date with them scores. Now I'm back. And I've not left you any uh, devices to try and do some of that. I've uh, took it all off away from you. <laughs> it's been not too bad with uh, the updates on the on the TV. It's been it's been okay. Try break. I've seen quite a few of them tonight. Especially in this evening's action. Has that been pretty much the case for the, the uh, first set or so? The break's actually been quite good so far. Um, Andy's break's been exceptional at times and Amir's last break was unbelievable. It was unfortunate the way he ended up landing in the end, but he still managed to get the finish. So the break's actually been okay so far. Um, it's been a big positive um, for both players, but it's been some of the shots where they've put themselves in trouble and somehow managed to pull out world-class shots or maybe even lucky shots at times to get themselves right back into these frames. It's been one hell of a match so far. Amir looking like he's going to go aggressive here right away. Cut in. Can he get the red out? He might still be able to sneak that up the cushion. Even maybe cushion first onto the yellow. In worst case, he'll take the pocket. But I think this might still sneak in. But I think taking the bag might be the better option here. He's potted the ball. I just wonder about the red that's between all the yellows on the side cushion here. I feel like he can get a, a decent angle to yeah. get himself, you know, trying to really develop it. I mean, he's come this far with uh, putting the three reds and yep. that. Is, you know, has he come too far now to even contemplate playing no. the safety? He's been super aggressive and it's, I mean, it's held him so well so far. It's not, um, it's not exactly done him any harm and he's in this match and in his entire tournament, as I was hearing before the match, for both of these players, Mark gets their first time in the quarter-finals of the World Championships. Yeah, he certainly is. But this red is protected, surrounded by yellows. Trying his hardest to get it out. He's got another chance, but he's going to have awkward queuing here. Yeah, I think that was the, the, the fact that there was so many yellows around that red 
It was more like a shield. And he's managed to kick it out, but he's missed the pop by a long way. And what opportunity does Andy Crowsdale have now? Need to score top corner. It's 2 2 now in that uh, fourth set. Two frames away, Simon Ward from getting himself a semi final place against Gareth Hibbert. What a semi final that could tend to be. If that's the case, what Chris Bow want? You know, he's not giving, he's not out of that yet. No, he's played some phenomenal pool this week. I must admit, yesterday I picked Simon only because after finding out that he had been in two finals at the World Championships before and not succeeded, I'm a great believer in third time lucky. So when somebody asked me to put a name on it, I said, you know what, I think Simon Ward might just be the one this year. Oh, there you go. Now a lot of commotion in the uh, playing arena. What's gone off? Something's gone off. Yeah, the, the decibels just went up a notch there. Certainly did. Made contact. He's got out of it. That was the uh, priority. Tell you, and the Jake Dillon knew love and Mark Farns with uh, match where he, Jake was 3 1 up. He went to 3 3. It looked like Jake didn't give Mark another chance. He's taken the opening set against a former world champion. Back in 2019, Mark Farns with Jake Dillon knew love. One set to nil ahead. Is there going to be another upset in this World Championships this year? We'll keep you right up to date. There's so yeah. much going off here in Gosford. I think every match so far right now is an absolute epic. And if you're around the arena, if you're watching at home, please don't take your eyes off the screen for a minute because it is absolutely unbelievable in this place right now. That looks like Andy Crosdale is going to level up in set number two here. Barring a major mistake, I do not see happening. He's okay there. I think he's, he's going to drop this in, yep. Looking at some of the uh, chat, um, Stephen, it looks like there's quite a lot of support in it from the Moroccans. Yeah. This is what this is what we expected on the the vote that went on the chat. I think it was seventy one percent or something like that for Amir to win. Wow! He's got a huge following on the on the chat function and obviously watching at home. So it's huge numbers and huge fan base for Amir Riyad right now. Yeah, I mean, you you probably know Andy Crosdale, you know, quite personally, yep. and uh, what a play. He, he was back in the day. I mean, he's just starting to really come alight here in the IPA. Yep. And this last couple of years, <coughs> he's taken it up another level. He really has. And he's starting to get some results. And uh, obviously, some of the time he's put in, you know, he's starting to, to see the, the reason why he's uh, was one of the best players yep. in the world at that time. Well, that's the thing. He's he's always been one of the, the big names for me when, when I started playing the game. I didn't start playing until a bit later. And Andy was... He's obviously part of the Jason Shaw family. He's married to Jason's sister. Um, so a large, large pool family that Jason's got. And Andy was always round about the guys in Scotland and stuff. And he was always a top, top player. And I was speaking to the guys on air about the the last match he played against Liam Roberts, where out of, I think it was 23 or 24 frames, frames between the two of them, they had 18 runouts and Andy had 11 Liam had seven, so it was some standard of match, and it just shows you the level Andy's playing at right now. Yeah, I mean, he has just missed that pot there, just as you're yeah. <laughs> bigging him up. All right, so we've just been told in her ear, obviously all that commotion that you've heard a couple of times now, and it's our very own commentators that uh, <laughs> are in a black ball shootout in the doubles. I'm sure uh, we've got a set of eyes over there that's watching it, and we'll keep you up to date. Just 
know, because I know you you all love our oh. Fairway and Dan Davey, but a mere... Oh, there you go, guys. Davey, look. I think that's where all the emotion is, is it? And it was all they've won it oh, against it. Ross Fairney and like Kieran the two Kay. Dan's as one. Well, we'll get back to work, lads. Get the cues <laughs> packed away. Get yourself back in here. They've done a cracking job. Well, that's know, a obviously commentating on the first two matches for us. Yep. Today. So that's a couple of Scottish pairs beat on penalties today. Mas oh. Myself and Johnny McDermott were beat by Clint Ianson and Rob Wilson, and now Dan and Daniel have beaten Ross Wilson, Fernie and uh, Kieran Kay. Kieran, yeah. Just seeing them coming to the picture now. Andy. Got a very unexpected return to the table after missing that right into the top right hand corner. Obviously, it was an open table, and uh, Amir replied with a, a similar miss. Looking at the yellows, Mark, they don't look as if any of them go at the top of the table, so Andy's going to have to develop them somehow. Can he do it here? Is he looking to do it here or even drop inside it? The one into the middle. That's what I think he's tried. He's just not had it hard enough. He's missed the pot anyway. It's probably a good miss. I know he looks a bit disappointed there, Andy, but I think that's a good miss. If there is such a thing as a good miss, guys, I think that's one of them. And Amir Riyadh has missed that by a long way. What does Andy play here? Does he decide to just open the yellows up? And there's Amir's attempt at the red again. He was concentrating so much on getting on that red at the bottom left hand corner that he's totally forgot to put the, the red that he was aiming for at the time. Oh, what a shot! What a shot from Andy Crosdale. Like I said, guys, this is one highlight reel of a match so far. And Andy's played the three ball smash there. Just thin cutting the outside yellow into the top left hand corner. I think the white is just overran there, but he's still got a chance. He's still got a chance here. And he's unfortunate, I think, that the white is just slightly overran. And he would have been a massive, massive odds on. He's still got work to do now. But again, he will, will be tracking. He could be tracking into red or anything. He's going to stop it in its tracks. This is awkward. Massive shot. Oh, he's played it well. Well controlled. Yeah, the, yeah, toughest pot of the two, taking it into the top corner, but kept us steady. As ever. So keeping them shots, pushing you, bridging over. Not out the woods yet. This is yeah. easy. Oh, he's played it well again. Is he? Yeah, it looks yeah, like he's, he's found the gap, played it well again. Yeah. Been a good clearance this one, Stephen. It's been outstanding from Andy here. There was nothing easy. And all of a sudden, he's on a black over the middle pocket. That is a super finish from Andy. 2-1 to Andy Crowsdale in set number two. Remember, he's also This leading. is the shot here I was talking about. Unbelievable. He actually lined it up before Andy. Had a look to see if he just caught that right, if it would go. And then you see there the long plant cushion first. Left himself bridging over the red for the long yellow. Again, he's still not easy. A slow drag. Just drags it home, brings the white back across. And as you see, Mark, that was a phenomenal finish from Andy there. Yeah, cued it very well indeed. Simon Ward, Chris Bowen, that's still level at 2 2 in that fourth set. Mark Farnsworth, he's taken the opening frame in the second set. Um, oh, has he taken a nibble? I think there's something else happened here. Is it 2-0 now to Farnsworth? Looking like he's breaking next. 
Or is it 1-1? One, one? Just also like he's updating. Let's have a look there. Yep. I'll let you know in a minute. And it comes through. So Another good break from Andy. His break's been really, really good. I think it's maybe been one, maybe two breaks so far that weren't absolutely perfect, but he seems to be getting a ball and getting himself control of these frames. Been told it is 2 0, and I have been updated on my uh, Q score here. 2 0, it is to Mark Files with second set. And you could see he was getting ready to break in the uh, the third frame as well. So, is he going to return by winning that second set? I think Andy might have just put himself in a bit of trouble here. Doesn't look like the yellow closest to the red now at the top goes. He's going to have work to do in this frame. An indication here the way he plays this. And he's tried to stun up into it. Maybe even sneak inside it, but unfortunately he hasn't managed it. And he's just gonna bounce. Just trying to see where on the table is safe. If he does decide to just bounce this red out, leaving the yellow wide open. Oh, he's tried to play it and off it. Oh, that's a good shot. It was a shot to nothing the way he's played it. You know, and that if it did go, he would have a chance of finishing. And if it didn't, he's actually got the pocket. So, Amir Riyad is at the table, but he has severe work to do in moving that one bad red. Let's see what he's got up his sleeve. He's got an angle right now on the one at the top. Can he play it right now? Again, it might be one of these moments. Not looking the gift horse in the mouth. He's taking the opposite one and that he's missed it. I think that's, he's tried to be too perfect. I think he's trying to just pop that and you can see where the white ball is. He's trying to widen the angle. But I think leaving that red there would have given him another opportunity if he took the ball, kicked it out. Depending on where the white was going to go, he might have given himself a better chance. Well, he's given Andy a great opportunity here to go three frames to one in front. And he's missed that by a long way. That makes me wonder, did it actually go? Did the yellow go? I have to assume the way he played on it, it did, but it looked like the black moved straight away, so it looked tight. And we've just heard that Jake Dylan Nurlov has got a frame back against Mark Farnsworth in that match. Yeah, so it was the white that clipped off the black on the way, but it did look super tight, so I'm not 100% sure that it went in clean. Well, it's Amir Riyad thinking here. He's unlucky. Yeah, it seemed to straighten up, didn't it? I think yeah. the more parry got into it, and that's what straightened up that cue ball. Yeah, it wasn't easy. It was never going to be easy to get that ball out from there. I think he had a chance a couple of shots ago. He refused it, and it left Andy with a big opportunity to make himself big favourite in this. Is he playing the 2-1? Yeah, he's played it too hard. Yeah, that was... Uh... He was under a bit of shot clock pressure yeah. there as well. Yes. For me, definitely chose the wrong shot. I mean, that's such a tough skill shot. Yeah. It's one of the ones, if you hit it too hard, it most stuns. 
And unfortunately for Amir, he's not managed to execute it in the right fashion. And Andy Crowsdale with a huge opportunity here to go 3-1 in front in set number two. And it remembers, guys, he is already one set up in this match. Okay, Dylan Newell, he's pulled a frame back in that second set. The 2 1 Mark Farnsworth leads, and uh, I think it's going to be Jake Dinner New Love to break in that four frame as well. Chris Bow and Simon Ward, that seems to be still locked at two frames each. And 2 1 to Simon Ward in sets. And a good finish from Andy in the end. Yeah, that match with Simon and Chris. Um, between sets here and between frames here, so it's been coming up quite a lot. And even um, after your yeah, your own interview with Gareth Hibbert, we had a maybe about a five ten minute period oh, where we got to see table. some of it. And look at that table! <laughs> what a match it's been! It has been an absolute epic encounter. The um, table looks a mess as well. <laughs> yeah, I think there's a lot of people to be played in that match still. Might need a few more fingers trying to work all that out. <laughs> Mark Farns with felt on the table. It looked like he's going about a finish here. It looked like he's probably going to get to leading 3-1, as, as is Andy Crowsdale in this second set. Yep, some fantastic matches on right now. Some fantastic pool being played, and none more so than the table we are witnessing right now on the match table, the main table. There's been some big errors, some fantastic shot making, and some great finishes. Oh, Mark Farns with his final red. I feel like he's going to try and drift that round the back of them yellows. It looks like he's got enough angle yep. to drift it round. Um, I wouldn't say it's too natural to, to come, so it's all about pace and yep. the amount of stun he gets on this. Yeah, it's risky to try and go through the gap. I think you're right. He's going to have to go all the way around the back. Oh, he looks as if pace he's... is good. Yeah, he's oh, perfect. Beautiful shot. Something. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why he's one of the best players in the world right now. His positional play, his recovery shots, I think, is probably the best way. Yeah. He seems to get back in position straight away in 3-1. Big Ray, Mark Farnsworth is leading Jake Dillon New Love in the second set but he is trailing by one set to nil it looks like that frame between Simon and Chris has Dino. opened up and now it depends on how aggressive Chris decides to be back to the main table Andy Crowsdale one frame away from taking the second set can Amir Riyad Abiletti He's oh, gone and off. off the cue ball. And what a chance this is for Andy. I mean, he could choose any set of colours here he wants. Reds, yellows, both of them look absolutely perfect. There's not a whole lot of traffic in the way, no matter what he decides. I think that's going to be his toughest decision here. It's not what what uh, what ball to play, what colour to play. Extension, please. Yeah. I think personally I would be going yellows, but let's see what Andy's thinking. I think it will be yellows for Andy. Again, it's another good break, but unfortunately kicked off two balls and into the middle pocket. Yeah, a little bit of a loose white, but I suppose a little bit of look at yeah. this trickled across there. But great opportunity now for Crowe, Andy Crowsdale, number 15 seed for this event. Looking like he's just going to close this set out as well. Yeah, he's been in absolute fantastic form, Andy. And I have to admit, I don't see him making too many mistakes here. He's been queuing great. And 
Sure. I've just been told in her ears that uh, that scrappy frame that looked between Simon Ward and Chris Bowen. Chris Bowen has got it. He's three two ahead now, so he's one frame away yep. from levelling that match up two sets apiece. Yeah, that looks like it could go all the way. And an absolute epic encounter. I've said that about five times already today, but it is absolutely unbelievable the pool both of the guys are playing and it is a battle. I wonder who will come out on top in that one. I one thing, Andy's made pretty light work of these yellows. Got himself a pretty natural angle now, just to drift down for the the black into the bottom right hand corner. And this should be the second set wrapped up. Yeah. So far, I think Andy's just about edged it. Um, I mean, he's obviously two sets to the good, but a couple of silly errors here and there from Amir has been the, the big difference in this match so far. Andy Crowsdale looking very dominant so far in this match. Yeah, man, that's giving him something to think about. He probably hasn't been in this position two sets to nil down. He all seems to be in control of all the matches he plays. There's Jake Dillon Newlove at the table, the one on the left, Sam Ward, the one on the right. Being told it's probably a dry break from counting the amount of balls that's left on the table. That's probably correct. Oh, taking the, uh, taking the yellows, trying to get that out. What a shot that is from Jake. I think he wanted to clear the red as well. You know, over the corner. Not sure if that yellow passes through. But we're not wasting any time on this main table. Set number three. Andy Crowsdale to break. Cue ball is all over. Where's it going? Oh. Fine, but this ball's flying in as well. Three reds and a yellow. What a break that is. And the white was everywhere. It was everywhere. But fortunately for Andy, look at this. So close to the top pocket. It's missing every ball on the table, so close to the middle pocket, but he's kept it on the table, Mark, and he's got a great chance again. Yeah, and Andy, he don't waste any time, does no. he? You just can't see him wasting any time over these yellows either. One good position shot from here, and it should be pretty straightforward for him. Oh, he's not really got into that one as much as he normally does. Yep. He's actually had a couple of shots like that so far in this match where he's been quite close with the cue ball and he hasn't managed to get the reaction that he was hoping for so he's given himself a bit more work than he would have liked but I think he's okay nicely yeah. done heart of the pocket that was cue ball close to the rail definitely more a bit closer than he wanted Oh, he's used the full pocket there. But that's what it's there for. Yeah, you feel like if he has it that thinner, he'll be a lot easier on yeah. this yellow. So he's drifting possibly away from his final yellow. Can he? Is he going to come round the way? back here? Can he hold it in any way, shape, or form? Do you, or does he need to play a cannon? Or does he? Is it, it looks like he's changed his mind. Yeah. Yeah. Re navigation. Just, uh, navigating his, his way around. See a lot of noise in that arena because Rick's had to shout twice <laughs> extension. Uh, we're timing referee to click it on. And it must go. It looks like he only had about three quarters of the bag here, but he's not messing about. Yeah, clean. Right into the heart of the pocket. Doesn't look like missing, does he? At no, the moment. He, he looks full of confidence. He's he's playing so quick and so fluent. He just looks he looks unstoppable here. Worrying times for all you Moroccan fans back at home or wherever you are throughout the world watching one of your favourite players. So Jake Dillon, Jake Dillon Nulov did win that frame. So it's 3-2 now to Mark Farnsworth in that second set. And it's also still 3-2 on the far table. 
to uh, Chris Beaumont who needs that frame and it looks like he's going to try and take a finish out now I think he wanted to leave an angle on this red I think he's straight yep oh even Simon's just having a quick look now oh, Chris is out of the way probably going to have to just run this down if he is straight yeah so we're just going to stay with this for a minute because crucial times in here we will put um, the coverage of the main table in the corner there it is just like that yeah that's just huge I'll just top this through he's oh. Oh, he's, missed the pot. He, he's played it run inside yeah it's the pot even harder it's one of the times he'll probably be saying to, him, saying to himself right now why didn't I just give myself a shot just give myself a shot and unfortunately Chris has missed that back to the main table guys Amir Riyad is at the table it's a decent contact. Has he got a ball? He's got a red. The white is still spinning. He's caught it sweet. Has he got anything easy to get him started here? Get some action on that yeah. blue ball, didn't he? It's spinning. Looks tight, but he's obviously on it. Yeah, a touch aside. He's on yeah, the one to the top left hand corner. Had to drag it in. Yeah. Yeah, can get through to the one top left. Um probably it's probably the shot to be honest. Don't wanna be taking anything that's too difficult. It's definitely at this stage. You know, because he's been right up against it. Yeah. Now he's every at shot is crucial. Yep, he's at that stage now where everything has to be so precise. Again, this is not easy, but if you just has to pot the ball, let the white just drift back into the middle of the table. Oh, oh he's missed it. A lot of movement on that shot. Yeah. Just, I think he didn't give it the respect he needed. Um, just watch this look, he just moves. Yeah, he was trying to walk it in, I think, there he was following it in. Yeah, but that's not gone right. And he's still got some serious work to do here. He's decided to just put the red over the pocket. 2-0 ahead in sets and 1-0 ahead in this third set. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that one. He's unlucky there. It's a good shot from Andy. He's he's unfortunate, but that's that type of containing shot, as you say, Mark, at this stage in the match, at the score line as it is, it's definitely a good shot to play. I just feel at this stage of the match as well, obviously I only came in late on, I don't think Amir's got used to this shot clock. No. Seems to be ticking down. He still hasn't used his extension. There just doesn't seem that composure there just no. yet. I think that's a fair reflection. He's, you see now he's starting to hurry. He's maybe just seen the, the, the clock on the wall, and yeah, he's called his extension this time. But it does look like he decides to like spring into action quite yeah, late. He's a steady. Yeah, up a that's bit. it. Just a bit of composure. The yellow next of the black. Oh. I'm being told Simon Ward has uh, won that frame after that miss from Chris into that top corner. So it's 3-3 three, three in that fourth set. Remember. Oh, brilliant shot. Simon only needs to win that frame in that set. to get through to the semi-finals where he'll meet Gareth Hibbert. Yeah, what a shot that was from Amir. He's played the skill shot, the two and one. Never easy, are they? Yeah, really not. 
and it wasn't right in the heart of the pocket so that was a very very difficult one and he's absolutely nailed it and given himself every chance of getting himself back in this set and uh, we keep getting lots of scores in our ears Jake did a new love he's leveled that up at 3-3 and well, that's another 3-3 three, three in, yep. in a set uh, between Jake Dillon-Nulov and Mark Farnsworth. It just seems like every match right now is turning into an epic and that's a skill shot for you again right now. Uh, that was not easy, that was a fantastic shot. Jake Dillon-Nulov is definitely a player in fire and as I actually mentioned earlier, there's a lot of people saying he's definitely no amateur. He's as good as a lot of the pro guys out there and it's no surprise to me that he is in with a great shout in set number two against Mark Farnsworth. But Mark Farnsworth is breaking. He needs, needs a, a big break. Praying for a ball. He's got a ball, he has. He has. Has he got a shot? His ball's flying in everywhere. Three of them. Yellow to the right middle there, possibly. Depends how close that black yeah. is. It looks tight. Yeah, it does. Very important frames on them two tables. Especially for Chris Bowron. It's a must win frame for him. If not, he's out. And Crowsdale, in the meantime, is. Unbelievable balls break again. All over. Andy's break is on fire. <coughs> he is breaking so well. Putting the white ball at a slight angle and then smashing straight into the first ball. It's quite unusual. You see quite a lot of people doing that and go in off straight into the middle pocket, but Andy seems to be catching them so sweet. And again, you're looking at this and you're, you're struggling to find where he could make a mistake, Mark. Yeah, they've split open like dreams. They really have. Oh yeah, I mean, if we'll, we'll be making stuff up if we're trying finding, <laughs> you know, like where it's going to go yeah. wrong. Not even going to bother. We're just going to admire him, just clearing him up. Oh, that he's took that cue action in again. That's that's maybe three times I've seen that in the match where he's just pulled away from it at the last second. I think he's only can get, just get through to this red. I mean, he's perfect. Got a perfect angle. Don't get me wrong. But he didn't look natural, yeah. did it? Well, if he goes on to clear them all, it makes no difference at all. He seems to have got not a bad angle, obviously going away from the black. How close will he try and get to this black or will he just leave himself a shot? Done pretty well. Yeah, that's okay. He's not got much to do, just... Slide it in. I don't foresee too many problems here. Yeah. Very good once again from Andy Crowsdale. Seem to be splitting well every time, breaking yeah. well. There's Simon Ward. Is this is his chance to get into the semi-finals? It looks like he's uh, pulling the trigger on these yellows. These could be the closing shots for this match yeah I think that yellow goes as well looking at that yep. the way that it's come round I think he's oh, absolutely he's, perfect he doesn't have to do anything with his cue ball just this white on and off the cushion leave himself yeah. straight yellow just making sure Oh, he decided to come. Yeah, obviously gone too far down, but it shouldn't be any problem yeah. again. So, this black to get into the semi-finals. And there you see it. He has won Simon Ward by three sets to one. He's into the semi-finals against Gareth Hibbert. Gareth Hibbert. That promises to be another fantastic match. Simon Ward definitely a player on form and the white ball is gone again and Andy has got two 
Shots here, one free shot that he's just played, and now one visit. Yeah, I think he'd like that one again. Yeah. There's not uh, nothing really adventurous about that one. I'll keep you up to date on the Mark Farns match as well. He's two matches. Jake Dillon and Newell of Mark Farnsworth and Amir Riyad Abdeletti and Andy Crowsdale. These are the final two matches in the quarterfinals. Still some work to do here for Andy. He's got the one just above the red on the left hand side of the table and the yellow inside the two reds. So you see him having a look there to just check the angle. I think if he manages to nick inside. He should be able to get on both of those yellows, possibly off the same shot. That cue bending as well. And he's, oh, he's a little, little bit unlucky. Yeah, he's so that. unfortunate again. He snapped his cue, didn't he? The way he leans down. Yeah. I think Andy was playing for the one closest to the bottom left bag there. He had lined it up, but he's not came far enough. He might screw it on and off the cushion here, or is he looking down the table? <coughs> yeah, he might drift past the black here. Yeah. That was risky. It was risky. Mm, what's he thinking now from here? I don't think he can pot that yellow now at the bottom, so... Drifting. Yeah. Drifting past the pocket. So, a minute, he's back. And I think he can maybe take the red closest to the left-hand cushion and off the yellow. So, Amir might just have a chance here to come and nick this frame. And it looked like Andy had a great chance to go and take it. There's Amir on the beep again. And I think he's... As soon as that time is running out, when he's getting to that beep, he just seems to rush that shot at the last second. Probably could have used his extension and executed that shot a bit better. Now I think the red still goes. It's not easy. Fantastic shot. Just been updated there, uh, and that's your latest score. Mark Farnsworth has won that uh, frame. He's leveled that match up at one set apiece. So this is the key shot. Very attacking, hasn't he? It's been very attacking. Don't think he could play it off the yellow. I might be wrong. He might be able to. I think play he it just off about can. I think he can. He's got to catch it half ball, which is really thick. Yep. Perfect. I think I would have been pushing the white through just a bit there. I think he should be just about okay. He's going to have to play both reds in the same, same bottom pocket. Just needs to hope he doesn't get too big a bounce here. Massive shot in the context of this match. Oh, he's decided to try and go round. Has he got away with that? I think he has. Yeah, I think he's still on that red. It's fine. Still a little bit of uh, navigation to do. Trying to give himself a shot on this black. First things first. Oh, beautiful. The red and he, I tell you what, he's cute that ever so well with timing and a little bit of trace of running side. Not out of this yet, is he? He's not giving up anyway. Yeah, oh, that's a fantastic finish. A brave finish, considering the they were all tough. There was nothing easy there. Andy is miles in front with two sets to the good, but Amir is going nowhere yet. Good shot. It was. This was a key shot, moving that yellow out of the way. Executed it superbly. Yeah, that was a lovely shot. And it perfectly. 
So, cause that's why we're waiting, just why the referee's uh, Rick, and he's just setting them up. Just the latest about the ladies, obviously they're down to, they're getting down to the semi-finals as well. So quarter-final one, Rihanna Graham against Savannah Lowe, 2-0 to Rihanna Graham. That's finished now because they're only a best of three. Vivresco nil, uh, Chloe Payne two. So that's set up the uh, semi-final, Rihanna Graham and Chloe Payne. And then the other two quarter-finals are still in action. Beck Sweeney against Kelly Egan. Currently that's one set to nil to Beck. And she is also 2-1 ahead in that second set. And then the uh, the last quarter-final, Lauren Chandler against Kiara Whitcomb. And Kiara is 1-0 ahead in sets and 1-0 ahead in the second set. All to play for also in the ladies' event. He didn't get the best contact there. Oh, that, that was quite similar to a couple of the shots that he's just pulled out of at the last second. He just didn't time that very well. But I tell you what, it's not a bad split. It looks like every single yellow still goes. I think Andy's got a bit fortunate here. Yeah, I think he's got a chance on these yellows. I think he might have been coming all the way down first, but he's okay. Yep, that's a good shot from Andy. Just needs a white to... It's just took a little turn at the last second there. You can actually see a mark on the table. It looks like it's just rolled over. Throw it in the pocket there, Andy. He's not been far off on too many, but that one, he definitely was a little bit off. Oh, a minute. He's back to the table. It's 2 2 in this set. You know, he needs two frames. Yeah, that was a big miss from Andy. Left him a lot, though. What can he do? Drop out all of this. He's been super aggressive so oh, far. This looks like he's is he taking this on? I think he's he just is. gonna draw all this back to the cushion. Yeah, yeah. He's drawing it back to the cushion. I think he's left the yellow though. He has, he's left Andy a chance. Do all them yellows go into this bottom right and yep. corner? I think they do, don't I they? I think they do, yeah. All three of them. So he's got one this one into the right centre and I'm sure all three of them go. We're going to find out because he's yep. got the perfect angle now to drop it on at least one of them. And if that other one goes, then uh, this is worrying times for him here. We had Abdiletti. Yeah, that was a. It's actually strange to see him play. I mean, if he gets oh, it, it right. Look. Yeah, you can see there. It's all about the right angle now. I think he's perfect. He does. He looks like he's got a nice little stun yeah. out angle just to stun up. Needs to be high on this. Ooh. Oh, he's got about a fortune there. Yeah, again, it was chucked that yeah. new action in, hasn't he? But he's got a lovely angle now to stun past, and he's on the black. Looking like Andy Crowsdale's going to go one frame away from getting himself also into the semi finals. Amir Riyad going away from the usual. He's been very aggressive so far in this match. And he decided to play a containing safety shot, which didn't go right. So, unfortunately for him, Andy Crosdale wins that frame. Yeah, so 
I think the latest score there is one set each and uh, one one frame each. According to the details I've got, I'm gonna try and get that updated. Uh, we'll just see that, but that's what I'm being. Well, that's what I can see in front of me. So one set each and one frame each in uh, set number three. All to play for there. That is a definite. Yeah, that's going to be a, a phenomenal match. Both players in fantastic form. I think there was a, a shot last night. Um, Mark Farnsworth was snookered and he had to go round the angles and the yellow and the black were almost touching each other. Yeah, we and showed it as yeah, when the programme started today. Unbelievable shot and that's what, that was the hope last night, Mark, that everybody was thinking, oh, it was a shame that wasn't on TV, it was a shame that wasn't... And then the news kind of broke, by the way. I think they might oh, have it. we did it. record it last yeah, night. We knew it was going yeah, off. Yeah, it was sat, fantastic. I sat behind with the TV guys uh, towards the end. I know you'd probably popped off to bed. No, I was watching it. Oh, you? Was <laughs> yeah, watching I was watching it from the sideline. I mean, yeah, there, I was there was watching. people gathered, weren't there, watching? Yeah, it was. A lot of local support for Mark. It was. And uh, he was lucky to get back to the table, especially after the black he missed, the uh, one that will probably haunt him yep. for a bit. But he's dodged a bullet, and uh, you know, and here he is, battling away from getting into the semi-finals. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's anything easy for Jake. He looks like he might just slide off the red and just leave the white at the bottom. Corner of the table. Yeah, I don't think he had much more there. So I'm looking, thinking it might be an open table, but he didn't have many options there. It looks like Mark can play any colour set here. Yeah. Does the red go? He's just played a. Oh, oh he's not a cushion now. Oh, he has it. Oh, he's at the side cushion, cushion yeah. I just thought that's because I was keeping me on the. Uh, yep. That object ball. But yeah, I just thought about it. Yeah, he has screwed it into the cushion. Good cue ball as well from Mark. Not leaving Jake anything. Great player, Jake is. Oh, he's a fantastic talent. A good shot. We turned it. Oh, this frame is absolutely massive. He's the next two. They don't win. Play for the next two. He's going to be out. It's as good a break as he could have asked for. Probably the best break I've seen him have. Yep. The others are there. It's just that one on the side cushion. the containing shot there Stephen but didn't really get the pocket no. yeah Andy it looks like he's going to pull the trigger get this match over the line he's just landed a bit straight on this one so he's having a look at the two at the top he's going to have to play the outside one first so it's definitely not easy but Andy will not be messing about here Needs to draw this back a touch. Oh, he's going up table. 
Yeah, he's strange not, selection yeah. of shot for, him, for me. I thought he might have left himself on that red next to it next. Yeah, because that's the thing. If he leaves himself the angle, he can maybe come across the table for both reds in the same pocket, but he's he's elected to try and come high. It's not a bad shot, but... Yeah, looks like he's got the snooker. That's yeah. What he's tried. But... This... I can admit... This cue ball. It's going to be hard for him to do it, but them two reds in the top half of the table. Going to need a bit of developing. Not sure if anything's straightforward. I like this. But okay. It's not the worst. The two reds at the top of the table aren't easy. A similar shot to what Mark played a minute, uh, Andy played a minute ago, sorry, would get him inside, however. I don't think these are easy, Mark. He's only got a small window to uh, play a cue ball into that area on that right hand cushion because that's the only pockets them reds go into is the top left. Yep. And there's a quite a bit of traffic at the same time, so this is not easy. I don't think he was potting that there, the way he played it. It looked like he was trying to put it over the pocket, but I think he's got a good angle here now. He can maybe either screw into both of them off the top cushion or maybe around the back of them if he doesn't manage it right. Oh, oh I thought that black was in then. And I tell you what, look at this. This is not bad. He's got a chance to drop this red in and he will be absolutely perfect. And that's a lot of fortune there. Yeah, he's, I mean, with what I've seen, he's definitely had a little bit of the more of the rub of the green. Yeah. He's going to play a snake up. Yeah, well, you know, he's in such a, yeah. a very strong position. But that's a loose shot. Again, yep. Should never have been trying to cover that in the middle pocket. He could have played it past it. Yep. It's a bit careless. It is. Because I mean, if he gets this, hides his cue ball somewhere, could put him as an advantage I don't think he has a uh, I think he can get through he definitely get through to the one on the bolt line I'm not sure he can put the red in the middle but I mean I think he can just stop the white here yeah, yeah he's having a look it looks tight in the middle yeah, it definitely looks tight in the middle like you said just just needs to stun this in and then he'll have a shot or he's stunning past it I like it yeah that's a good shot not perfect. He's got to manage his cue ball here as good as he can. Leave himself a shot. And he will be into the semi finals. He's got it. And Andy Crosdale is. Your winner, three sets to nil. It wasn't vintage at times. There was some there was some outstanding stuff in the match, guys. There was some serious bits of misfortune in both both ends of the table. There was some outstanding recovery shots. But over the piece, Andy probably just about edged it. He was a, a better player on the day. Amir was unfortunate at times. But I have to say, guys, it was a fantastic match to watch. There was loads and loads of good, bad and the ugly, if you want to call it that. Andy Crosdale is your winner. And he will go to his first semi-final after being in his very first quarter-final. And Andy will play the winner of that match, currently being played by... Mark Farnsworth and Jake Dylan Newlove. And that's a tightly contested match going on right now as well. So that's a mouth watering tight. No matter who wins that match, Andy will play. So it's lining up well so far, guys. And as I say, Andy Crosdale is into his first semi final. Commiserations to Amir Riyadh. And I'm going to pass you over to Mark, who is with Andy right now. Thank you very much, guys. 
Thanks, Stephen. And here I am joined with our latest winner of that match, and uh, Andy Crowsdale. You've got to be pretty pleased with that performance. Uh, I guess uh, you know against a tricky opponent, somebody you probably don't know too much about. No, never seen him play before. Um, he's obviously a good player to get to the quarterfinals. Um, yeah, it was a funny game, to be honest. Um, it, with the sets, there's important moments in in the match, and and I was three two down in the first set, uh, and I got a, a, a treble, and then I think I broke and dished, which won me the set. Uh, I don't get the treble. He pots the black, and I, I lose the first set. It's a completely different game. Um, and I, I played very, I played steady. I played very steady. I won't. I was, I was, you know, unbelievable. But I played very steady, which sometimes he's he's he's, he's good enough, you know. And as you mentioned, you know, um, obviously playing sets, you know, it can be a bit alien to us because we don't really it's play strange. it in um, in our tour events, you know, the yeah. all extended races and that. Yeah. I mean, do, do you feel like it favours you a little bit? Because uh, there is some pressure moments more not, in the not set. Not particularly, no. It, it's, like I say, it is very, very strange. I mean, the, there's been a couple of times where you, you, you're winning the set 3-0 or you're 2-1 in front in sets and you're winning the next set 3-0 and then all of a sudden it's... It's within the you know blink of an eye, it's free all, and it's, like, it's just game on again. You know, it's um, you, 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 the only time you ever feel comfortable is when you've won, and that is to put it bluntly. And when you're playing a race to ten, you can be eight two in front, and you feel like you're not going to get beat, you know, sort of thing. Or you know, but in the sets, it's yeah, you never, you never, you never get comfortable until you've actually won. Well, I mean, you've you obviously played quite a few matches with this set format now, yeah. and uh, you've played in previous years as well. Do you find it, you feel a little bit different towards it now, or how, how do you feel? It's different, it is different. And again, like, as I've just said, you know, you never feel comfortable, so it just gives it that, 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 that bit of, um, how can I put it? It's, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're the, the other player, uh, you know, or, or the, 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 the player that's behind, should I say, uh, has always has the opportunity to get back in the game very quickly, and uh, and things can change very quickly. And the know. TV table, you know, you've had a bit of a resurgence back into your career. You know, you've been you've been playing pretty well along the yeah, tour the last couple of years yeah. and that. Um, oh, did, did you find that Amir really struggled with probably the shot clock and that, and where you settled in quite early doors? Yeah, I, I mean, again, I don't know what what he plays back home. You know, I mean, he, he might play. On a similar sort of you know format back home, but um, yeah, as you've just said, I, I've had uh, I've been lucky enough, uh, played well enough to to have a few goals on the on the stream table. It is different, um, not just the thirty second shot clock. The table is different, um, and it does take a little bit of getting used to. Um, so don't get me wrong. When I was when when I, I, we, we were on the stream table. If I'm being honest, I was happy about that, you know, um, because generally I don't play bad <laughs> on the stream table. So, um, yeah, I like to think I've got a decent record on it and yeah. And a little bit about yourself, obviously you've had this resurgence back in, you know, with your career and that. What have you been doing differently, uh, you know, over the past years to try and get back to somewhere? You know, obviously you played a, a lot in your past and got to a, a very high level and you, you seem to be enjoying yourself more and playing some really great stuff. I think that's probably, you've just probably hit the nail on the head really. I, I'm enjoying competing, as I've said before. Um, I, I wish I enjoyed practising as much as I enjoy competing because, uh, you know, I enjoy playing against other people. And, um, you know, when it's, when when you have to, you know, when the pressure's on, you have to play well. Um, I'm just enjoying it. And to be honest with you, uh, probably the moment where I stop enjoying it is probably when I probably pack in, you know. Uh, but I'm enjoying it, you know. And on paper, you know, obviously with the, the people that was watching at home today, you was the favourite for this match. And you, you've seen how this World Championship has gone so far. There has been quite a lot of upsets. Did you feel that you was a favourite in this match at all? Or did, did you think it was just a level playing field? No, it's, it's just... It, it's. As I said uh, at the beginning, he's a good player. I mean, I don't know him, but he's obviously a good player. He got to the quarterfinals, you know. So <laughs> you've just got to go out and do your thing and and, 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 and play your best and win. Um, yeah, there's nothing. Um, there's no going into any matches thinking your favourite. Um, you've just got to go and win. <laughs> Simple as that, really. And semi-finals tomorrow. I mean, you've got to be incredibly proud of the achievement now. But how, what would it mean for you to go on and 
you know, have a possibility of even trying to lift this trophy to come yeah, Saturday it'd night. It would be really nice. It'd be, it would be good. Um, I've said for quite a few years, there is one left inside me, and all there is. Um, it, this one had been a nice, this one had been nice to be to be the last one, but um, yeah, uh, like I said, listen, I've got I'm in the semis. I've got two more matches, hopefully. Uh, I've I'll, no doubt I'll have a very hard game tomorrow um, in the semis. I'm not sure who I'm playing yet. Well, Jay Dillon, New Love, Wolf, Mark Farnsworth. They're yeah. still playing currently. It was one set of piece. It was one frame a piece when I last came out of the commentary box. Do, are you, any preference of who you are ever play? No, you've you obviously played Mark a few times, and no doubt yeah. Jake, you know, being a great amateur player, he is. Yeah. You've probably met him in a tournament, one or two at least. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not bothered, genuinely not bothered um, who I get. Again, as I said, if I do my thing, I'm not bothered. And, and you're going to be on second tomorrow. Okay. Um, obviously, the first semi final, that'll be up first tomorrow, yep. uh, tomorrow's play. Will you watch anything of the first uh, semi final at all, or will you just um, go into your own little motion well, and just do it? whatever? What time are you on at? I think you're 2.30, I think it so is. The first so. one's at 12, is that Yeah, well, yeah, but around 2.30, okay. because obviously um, it's a, a follow on from yeah, the next I'll probably, match. I'll probably watch it in my bed, to be fair, uh, and then just, just obviously start getting prepared as it's, as it's coming to an end. <laughs> you seem very, very happy with your win, and you seem in yeah. very, very great spirits. Yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. I've got we'll to say, a very big well done and you're into the semi-finals Andy Thanks whoever well. you play good luck for tomorrow thank you very much appreciate well, that Andy Crowsdale Crowey he's into the semi-finals <laughs>